the puck is kind of like a still like a taxi pick, right, for Immortals. They do run him in. Do they? All three lanes, right? Maybe, maybe not so much on Kyo, but I, I remember MP and uh, 4F. They do play this hero. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. 4F does have it in his hero pool over the. In I mean, this particular patch, anyway. It's really important that you open a draft and you want to have this kind of like flexi picks with, with multiple players having the ability to take the hero, so it's easier for the captain to draft around it. And they go for the Spirit Breaker, which is uh, generally one of the heroes that teams like to go pick up against the Night Stalker. Just follow him around, because Night Stalker likes to pressure, run around, roam during the night phase, and SB is the kind of hero that can actually ma match that aggression, get the vision when you charge him. I'll be a puppy hero, presumably. Yep. yep. Uh, yep, so it's going to be the one, uh, I'm going to get all the farm, Puppy's going to yeah. be on the SB, buying all the wards, and making sure that they have a good early game. It's going to help the Doom out a little, but I, I imagine this game, there'll be a lot of focus on the mid lane. In, during Star Ladder, Secret has been putting a lot of focus in their mid lane, helping mid one get a good game. And you feel like they'll probably wait until the last pick for that? Yeah, very, very, yeah, very likely. He has a deep enough pool that they don't have to worry about the extra ban either. Mm -hmm. So they go for the Winter Wyvern, which is uh, a hero that rising in popularity lately as an offlane or a support. Mm. He's a hero that's pretty good uh, with the night vision. He has like night vision, so with NS uh, synergy. And still a flexi pick if they want to do like... A, I've seen 4F play this hero in his pups. So it might actually be a safe lane or mid puck and an offlane Winter Wyvern. It's a hero that... Farms a lot though, I would say. It takes a lot of space. And right now they have Puck and Wyvern. So they have two heroes that actually push out wave like push out waves. Very good wave clear. So it Dying indicates maybe they're going for a more speed push, pick off with the vision NS kind of game. And Secret go for the DK, which is gonna mean that they wanna group up and push. Play around the dragon farm a lot. That's a lot of strength heroes, man. Timber, you're thinking? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else aside from Timber that's really good against strength heroes? Venno, but Venno's ban. <laughs> I like Venno against all these tanky cores. Slow them down, kite them. But right now, um, Pico has a very, very solid draft around like five manning. It's a very distinct playstyle that they have. They want to snowball off the laning phase. They have good like lanes. They're hoping to get good lanes with the SB support and off lane and try to group up with the dragon farm and take towers after that. And for whereas for Immortals, they are much more looking like a split kind of game. Try to get pick offs and these three heroes right now they are more leaning towards that direction, but they still have decent team fight with the puck Wyvern, but not much damage yet. So I assume if they want to go for like a team fight lineup, the next two picks would. What is this? Probably off lane Pugna. Off lane Pugna five Wyvern mid Support puck to rev Pugna. Yeah. Seems mostly. We can also see MP playing Pugna, Yeah, right? MP's played Pugna Ten a lot recently. Remaining. It's still quite unclear how Immortals is, but I'm right now still leaning a bit more towards Secret's uh, lineup. I feel they have a much more clear and solid lineup. What uh, the last picks are going to be. Can, can you actually sway my opinion? You'd imagine that that puck is actually an MP puck, wouldn't you? Yeah, Therefore, it's, the Pugna it's definitely possible. Then has to be a Ferev yeah. Pugna, doesn't it? And you might want to like pick some alchemist or you know something to bind the whole lineup yeah. together, some strong hero. Yeah, QI's played a lot of elk. Right now, Secret are Dying trying to figure out what is that diamond, you know? What is that? <laughs> so Stone. they're going to take away the monkey, which actually is QO's most played hero over the last patch. Yeah. So good, uh, good data. It fits him a lot. Snowballish hero, melee call. Mm. Very, very strong. The lane. You put him at the right matchup, like a DK. Against melee, it's really Ten good for Monkey King. Remaining. But they, haven't they put them in a really good position there? I think that's quite a smart draft in Five a way because they've said, "Well, remaining. you can ban the monkey, but then we can we've got plenty of other options in the team." But then, like, not all the options would fit a cure. Cure is a very special and unique play. Play that kind of like snowballish that farms a lot. You would want to put him on th those kind of. You do not want to put him on a Dragonite. Right. Nope. Or even a puck, you don't want to put him on the. That's mm. that's for me. I want him to be on a hero that requires the most farm on my team. So they ban out the brute. <laughs> Still worrying about you know the the, the cheese. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, like they they won't have last pick for this. If they have to pick a hero that. 
might get countered as well. So there's a lot of things that you, you want to consider right now. You need to think ahead of what the enemy might Five pick. You have remaining. to pick a hero according to that possibility. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of still feeling the elk here for them. Not sure what else is best for them. They have pretty good Aghanim's heroes. Night Stalker, Pugna, yep. the Park, so Alchemist would fit. Doesn't and care about Doom, and they, Ace Band. They need a they need a front line, and Elk would provide them that front line. I still think they would have damage issues. Oh, they pick CK. So what is Kyo gonna play? I think Puck. The Puck. So CK is definitely gonna be their front line now, and uh, but Dragonite is pretty good against CK. You have that splash damage. Say Secret still has pretty okay heroes that are dealing with the uh, Secret Ultimate. I have one more last pick Five here, which they could still pick something. Sven, Sven, is, uh, Sven really is pretty good, good against her. So you, you don't think QO is going to go with the CK? No, I'm not sure though. I could see Medusa too. Yeah. See Medusa sometimes versus Wyvern in the Chaos Knight. Doesn't care about getting cursed. You can still like split shot your enemies, so they can't really do that much in curse, and get Ags and kill all CK solutions. So that pick is also really good, but does Ace play uh, any carry? Can any carry? Play Medusa. Okay. Yeah, but <laughs> hasn't played it in this patch. They probably don't like. He probably doesn't like the thing. Oh, Ark Warden. Saw it in the second game of the first series of the day as not well. Not so not sold sure. on it. I think it's. But it's okay with a Dragonite lineup because you have front. Like they have three front lines: the Doom, the SB, and the DK can be the front line. Yeah. You need heroes that can protect the Ark Warden. And create space for him. Spirit okay. Breaker is perfect hero for that. <laughs> uh, let's do uh, quick predictions. Winter, what do you? Uh, what have you seen from the draft that allows Secret. you to go one way or the Secret. I like the draft. More solid fight. Good team fight. Um, Even with the Arc Warden pick at the end. Yeah, and I'm not so sure what's QO going to play, though. Right. If he's going to play the puck, I'm not so sure about that. Mm. I, think, I think QO is going to go on the CK, personally, from just from history. But I think he's going to play the puck. All right. We'll I believe see. QO, too. We'll have that battle alongside. Is that a nice, for? aggressive hero? <laughs> I'll go with Immortals for this. I know they're the underdog, but I like to draft just a time. Okay, good. All right, well, there we go then. Uh, predictions are done. They've been split one way or the other. We're going to find out over the next couple of hours which team takes home the victory and heads on into the winner's bracket, which we'll see at the end of the day as well here in Group A. Time now to head back to the commentary team. We've fogged off one player into the commentary box. He's been joined by a British-Australian. Of course, it's Toby One alongside. You know, Red Eye thinks he's funny. He's you're, get, you're getting fogged off, and he's, he's having a crack at my dual citizenship. He's trying so hard just to get at me. Yeah, it's not working. Trying hard the English way, which is not funny at all. I'm Toby. This is Fogged. Hello. And we're going to have ourselves a good bit of, good bit of fun. Team mm -hmm. Secret. And the team which I... I, I... Oh, we, we watched your video or your interview, right? Wait, really? That was an interview? But yeah, I, yeah, I did one on a website which nobody knows about. Um, but <laughs> that's not the point. I saw it. <laughs> wow. Thanks, Fog, Anytime, for reading dude. things which I thought. That's great. Dude, I got you. I mean, we're, we're, we're lucky this game, though, for sure, like you're saying. Yeah. Uh, we've got Yapsor and Rubik, and everybody's happy. And, I mean, I got a pug in my game I'm casting. I'm, I'm a happy man. I'm always happy watching, like, if, if Yapsor plays Rubik, if Kuro plays Rubik, if anyone plays Rubik, I'm kind of happy. The only other time I'm happier is if somebody picks Enigma. Please, new patch, make him viable. <laughs> um, for now, we get we get crapped on with Ark Warden as the new thing. Hey, come on, he's fun. He's interesting to watch. I, I think every team needs to have this kind of player that, that plays. No. We mentioned on the panel someone that plays these disgusting heroes. That's Ace. Ace plays Broodmother. Ace <laughs> plays Ark Warden. What's the other big one that Ace plays? Uh, Oscar. He plays all of them. I mean, in pubs, he's all over those. Yeah, disgusting heroes. Yeah, it's true. Only great disgusting things come from Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's where we give a lot of credit for uh, Cinderin as well as Milk. They have some, yeah, those, those are great things. How can we, how can you say, how are you flaming Cinderin? They're, 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 dis they're disgusting. No. They are disgusting. They've got good pastries. Come disgusting on. but OP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here, I'm, I'm like, I'm looking at 4 of, I think he should be, he should be okay in the bottom lane as long as the Night Stalker's with him, but every time this Pugna is left alone, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit concerned for him. Spirit Breaker Charge, Rubik, Arc Warden is mixed damage because you have the Flux as well as the Spark Wraith if there is a Decrepify. So I think it's really a lot on, on Febby to make sure that 4 doesn't get shut down in this game because that's a lot of the early game damage for Immortals in this one. Because CK is a hero that we've seen quite often recently, but takes some time to ramp up. You need that armlet. 
you need to get that level advantage. Well, that's the reason why Winter Wyvern's up here. Harassment, have the Nice Stalker move between the lanes, so you get what you like, right? It's it's space for the Pugna, yep. if Nice Stalker can create it. And then movement in the, in the lanes. Yeah, and it, we'll see Puppy probably just emphasizing mostly on that bottom lane, as we mentioned, because charging Puck, it's, it's kind of... Pointless. It just doesn't really. Yeah, just, it has no no purpose. Well, he's charging bottom lane instead, so they're going for yep. Forev. Yapsaw is actually in kind of a nice position. The Wraith is cutting off the retreat, so Yapsaw moves in. You get your first done. There's two oh, spark rates on either side. The creep wave soaked up one, but Forev dragged out way too far, and that is going to be first blood on the off lane. You said you needed protection. Yeah, he I... obviously didn't use two layers. They had to have the Void to char cancel the charge. That's pretty much the only way they get the save there. But he was already blanketed by the Spark Wraiths in the back. So it was definitely a bit difficult. Ace, got to take some harassment here. This is the, the the low armor heroes that just get punished a bit by this amount of harass. But should be just fine. Even though Arc Warden sits at zero, Pugna at one. It's all about puppies' charges, though. Every single time he charges, it should be a kill if they don't cancel it. Actually, interesting you bring up the uh, like the low armor point. Is that where CK has to move early before they're able to build up items to like kind of make up for that lack of armor? The one armor on the Doombringer is a base. The zero base on Arc Warden only buffed up by his one item at the moment. I mean, yeah, that, it's gonna hurt. They'll probably item, itemize for it. We'll see Doom get some, uh, get like the Ogre Creep more than likely to be able to deal with that to throw it on his teammates. But they're more of like uh, the DK being that front line and Arc Warden getting online later, because that's just what we see from the hero. The hero needs a lot of time. So they'll they'll buff up the other guys and make sure they're fine. And we'll probably see Puppy get like the casual buckler. That's just, you know, Puppy. Or Medallion, something along those lines, just to be able to throw on his teammates. Febby and Puppy having it out a little bit. It's only just, just casual harassment. I think both sides don't really give a crap about this. You're keeping your... Okay, well maybe you do when you jump down towards Forever with your charge forward. Yep, so in the neighborhood. Just keeping them away, Febby. Okay, well he does have that void thanks to the Crepify. The amplification was there. Puppy's He's, dropping low yep. and he won't make it to the Vools in time. So Forever able to level up the kill count on that bottom lane. Yeah, a little bit of a, a, bit of a mistake there by Puppy. You know, you're playing versus a Pugna lane. Pugna's very fast. If you're going to charge toward that, you're going to get caught up by that 400 movement speed with Boots Windlace. Just got to stay off the map pretty much as that Spirit Breaker so you get those charges successfully. Maybe also, also a good read from Immortals to pull for Rev off the lane. Fabby's already starting his TP out. He knows the second he gets grabbed like that, there's potentially too much damage coming out from Ace. So makes sense. TP mm -hmm. back, build back up again, then just run back out. Puppy TP mid and filled the bottle in the meantime. Oh, Puppy's going sure bottom. That he's Forev. Full. Has he waited a little bit too long to back up? The Spark Wraith is there. Yaptot's going to get in range and he will do so. Pick him up, throw him down. He's the level one Fade Bolt available, so Decrepify. Decrepify is a little bit, but Forev will survive and get back to the tower. 3.5 duration. Still quite strong. They need the Spark Wraith after that. Or maybe even like the level of Bash would have been enough. Puppy was level two, but. Still in level one on that Spirit Breaker, suffering a bit. And we're going to be turning into the first night soon to see how Febby's movements will come out. But I don't know if he can really do so much about the mid lane because mid one is having a great time, as expected. Dragon Knight tends to win these matchups quite... or win or come out evenly in majority of these matchups now. Yeah, so it's, it's good for the DK. It's probably even better, the fact that Puck's staying toe-to-toe -to -toe when the difference between the one positions is so different. Like, Ace is just shy of level, level four. He's got 12-4 CS at the moment. Comparing that to the CK, who's four and four and a third and 24-9 on the CS. So Kira's having a lot better time. Febby trying to keep his fun fun time going as nighttime's just begun. Puppy voided up. The run is still gonna go, and Febby's got the movement speed to work it. And Puppy, no way to escape from that one, especially when the splinter blast provides more damage. Yapsaw's gonna be a quick to follow up, even though he gets the AoE stun. You got MP's rotation. All observer. Oh. Yapsaw tries to deny himself, but Febby just get the claws into his back right at the right moment before the Black Dragons will attack. And thanks to those Black Dragons attacking, Febby is forced to run away. Great start to the night. At least they peel the aggression off from Ace. That's the one benefit, I guess, for Seeker. But yeah, they, they point that out, that glaring differential in CS is pretty massive. Now, Seeker's actually just rotating because they don't feel like they can stop that pressure. And they're yep. going to try to pressure Q on, but this is tough. Where's they the TP have, support? They don't have Infernal Blade, but they might have enough anyway to chase him out with that secondary bash from Puppy. They need to bring bring the Doom in range for the burn, and it will be Scorched yeah. to kill him, even though he's hiding in the trees. Jeez. Father is able to find that kill. That secondary bash was pretty needed, actually. Without the level up in Infernal Blade, Puppy Father did not have it just yet, but after the kill, now he has it. And they've got good, good ways to threaten kills. 
So now it looks like they're just going to sack Ace. This is a kind of a secret strategy. Huh. This is what they like to do a lot of the times when they play. Just leave their carry alone and then emphasize on the other two lanes. Since mid one is their, their true carry most of the time. I had to double take for a second. I'm like, secret strategy? Wait, yeah, no, everybody knows about it. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, wait a minute. It's a, it's a trap in words. <laughs> Mm. So, so four Evan Febby have done their job down here. The Pugman yep. is level four. Arcane Boots. He's going to be able to put a lot of pressure on whenever the catapult does rotate down, and should be able to, should be able to not let Ace have a good time at all. But with the Spark Rays protecting him for the moment, yeah. at least Ace can soak up some levels again. But he will be behind the CK. Yeah, and that's that's pretty damn scary. I mean, this we're we're looking at Immortals, right? This is old MVP. These guys are gonna run at that Arc Warden as soon as they're able to, mm -hmm. and it's gonna start happening very shortly. Puck is now six. They're starting to get their level advantage, and it's still nighttime, so they're definitely gonna press their advantage. Really good scan from Team Secret. They understand that Febby is hanging in the tree line, yep. so mid one's playing very defensively, but also could move it from Immortals. Having that Observer Ward on top of the Dire Ancient, sta on top of the Radiant Ancient area, they're able to see any kind of counter movement from Team Secret. Mm -hmm. So easy to escape, no real risk maneuver, but bottom. they go to bottom lane. That is where Arc Warden being attacked under the tower. He's trying to get the Spark Rays down. Febby's going to tank up most of it, allowing Ferev to keep attacking. Hits that level 3 Nether Blast as Ace cuts through the tree lines. Another Spirit down, but the Silence MP able to hit him with both the Orb and the Rift, giving him the damage they need. And Immortals will take the T1 tower to follow. CK going to go into Chaos Bolt, as well as his full ultimate Phantasm. Needs that damage to kill off Yapsil with a Fade Bolt. Damage to reduce and reinforcements have arrived from Team Seeker, but so as it has from MP. A three-man Dream Coil. They actually keep QO alive. He's salving up, ready to fight once more. And that Scorched Earth from Fada is now worn out. Mid-1 will arrive. A double damaging Dragon. A perfect time for Mid-1 to come in a double kill for him and now both sides will claim the safe lane tier one towers that was a great rotation yeah perfect timing there for mid one but the puck also that was a, quite a decent one but they're pretty durable on the side of secret this is what we were talking about the spirit breaker the doom the dk these three heavy frontliners don't really care too much about these the spell damage once winter wyvern gets some more levels in the arctic burn that's some of the damage but four of at least during that does is able to take that bottom tower and you see the Phantasm get nuked down very quickly here, of course, from the AoE burst. But I wonder if this actually begs the question. We were, we were talking about, at least with the low armor, maybe that would make it a little harder for Team Secret. But where was that physical damage? Yep. We were asking for it with the fifth pick going, how are they actually going to find this Immortals? We are even tossing up Phantom Assassin, even though you said that would lose the game. Yeah. But like, how would you find that damage in the future? Is it just CK having to level more than he already has? That's Yeah, that's what they need. They need to like have the armlet online. This hero takes quite a while still, and QO is feeling the pressure. Even though he was free farming up a bit top, he's 0-2 and two now. He's queued up a Midas. On yeah, that he's CK. actually changed his mind. Dubu's on the run on top lane. Quick Infernal Blade's gonna hit him. MP able to kill off Puppy in the jungle in the meantime. So kills on both sides of the map. Supports the ones to die. But for Red's adding the pressure, so the money will still come in with this push. Yeah. Puppy's fine with this though. This is like this is his role actually as the team lately I've been seeing. He just dies, tanks the ganks, especially when Yap starts playing the Rubik, make sure he can get his items online. They're charging MP. It looks like Team Secret wanna fight in the bottom lane. MP, okay, they're gonna pull out the Spark Wraith. Triggered out by Ace, and now he's going to clone it up as well, looking for as much damage as he can to Febby, who starts his TP. Yapsil will cancel it, however. And Ace will find that kill on the escaping Night Stalker. Ace needs those kills to come back. Are they going to smoke up and try and push? Trying to get some kind of pick off here. Oh, they it's have be Puppy, but under the shrine? He should be fine with the charge away. Yeah, he's gone. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't find him. And they will find the DK. Decrepit find up, Puppy's already started his charge out, Bafada with a TP. Again, Team Seeker coming in force. Did he just get the stun after, after the life drain started again? It looks like that happened because of the projectile. So, 4ev tries to decrep drain, gets stunned up. And they're in the jungle right next to a shrine. You're going to get outnumbered there. Very aggressive play coming up from Immortals. And Secret, the big shining stars right now are definitely Fada and mid one being at the right place at the right time. Yep. They're always TPing him, but then again, it's that, it's that position, right? Immortals had the vision, but they're yep. still fighting underneath an active shrine. So mid one can push the mid. But the rest of Immortals are now backed up, so the Hand of Minus did complete over on QO. He's gone bush, while you've got Puck up on the top lane trying to finish up his full Veil. And not too far off at 250 gold. So they'll have, you know, they'll have... Except he just got doomed. 
So all that wonderful money which he's got, Fada is on the run. He's... Support's coming in, so if Fada commits to this, he may die to QO as well as Forev. Decrepify is there, they start draining out the Doombringer. Support is not coming in from Team Secret. So Fada, who has one kill and zero deaths, is now going to have his first death of the game. MP will probably survive, especially now the puppy has cancelled his charge. They get mid tower out of it though. I mean, there's a bit of a over overzealous play by Fada. He wasn't able to close the distance to get that infernal blade hit. If he, I think, if he had gotten the infernal blade initially, with the scorcher thought up, he would have been able to chase it down. But ambitious play by himself, not even under the vision of a charge or anything like that, so he can keep keep the sights on the puck. Kyo is really delaying this armlet. He's actually going to finish up his treads now that he's got the Midas. So looking for that instant also, strength for now. He maxed the stun. We've been seeing the 1-4-1 build pretty much every time now, even 1-4-4. But he went for the four max points in the stun. A bit different from playstyle we've been seeing. Puppy charge top. Forev should be getting brought down here quite easily. Yeah, that spark rate is going to rip him apart. Long yeah. duration hurts and then Fada Infernal Blades him. Maybe the lack of reality rift points is just because of what we were talking about with Team Secrets here is not having that much armor. But then you want to negate them even more. True. So the especially with DK, it's actually. very it's very strange. And like we see the one four one four four build because you get to farm a lot harder with that chaos strike in the jungle, so you get your armor at better timings. I haven't seen the four chaos ball build in quite a long time on the CK, to be honest. But this, th if anything, that kind of it makes a little bit of sense for immortals, just because that's the way they like to play, right? Very aggressive with QO. Yeah, so he wants to get involved on kills with stuns, but not crazy about it. I like the reality rift max build a lot. So oh. if he keeps hitting four second stuns, we'll say he's a genius. For yeah, now, fair enough. Dubu in a little bit of trouble inside the Radiant Jungle. Arctic Burn's going to be stolen by Yapsaw. That's a very nice spell to steal. And a very easy kill for mid one. Having a double damage room ready and bottled up. Revenge being searched for by MP in the mid, but it's it's Ace. It's an Arc Warden. It's difficult, to yeah. say the least, with their lineup. Ace is starting to catch back up, almost as the Midas finished. So he's he's doing alright, still like 1300 gold behind Kyo, but mid one is the big problem, of course, on that Dragonite. I think he actually finished up, the, was it a Blink Dagger? Or he has a full Shadow Blade already actually coming on the Dragonite. Yeah, he's the one that wants to initiate, but he's but being he's initiated stuck. on right now. He's Immortals, got... it's all over him. The Shadow Blade does come in, but... Febby will find the kill just in time before the Invis can be triggered off Yapsaw. That little Arctic burn, or sorry, his darkness, yeah, just flying himself away. Puppy, reinforcements in, but now he's dragged in by QO. So back to back kills now here for Immortal. And they may go for a little bit more. I was thinking about the mid tower, but with the pressure being applied by Fada to the top, Febby is forced to move off the mid lane. So right there, you know, your point was proven. Kyo's a genius. He got a three-second stun there. And the Shadow Blade, if it was a two-second stun, he would have maybe been able to use the Invis there. No, it was just split-second timing, though. Mid one a bit unlucky there with the Courier. Might have been able to live. <laughs> Yapsol looks so bloody though. stupid riding his broomstick in with Darkness. He's the ultimate witch or warlord, however you want to put it. Forever picked off. Simple initiation and the uh, maybe they also didn't see the reveal of the Shadow Blade I don't think they uh, saw during the last up. fight or else that wouldn't have happened right there. Yeah. Oh, I was confused because you kept saying darkness. I'm like, oh, Hunter in the Night. Yeah, you, the Rubik's running around very fast. It's, that's actually pretty cool that, that you can steal that with dark uh, with the Rubik. In the past, Night Stalker is not really the greatest versus... Uh, Rubik's not the greatest versus Night Stalker, but with that, you can always fly away, set up for kills, yeah. get vision, and it's, of course, when nighttime, you get that bo that boost of movement speed and attack speed. That is, that's pretty sweet. I haven't really seen that too often. Let's have to correct my names on it. Yeah, I was a little confused. Yeah. He's actually entirely skipping Armlet. He's going straight for Echo Saber on QO. Okay. So maybe because of the, uh, the damage ticks that they have, I guess with the DK form as well as the Scorched Earth and uh, Infernal Blade, he doesn't feel like it's as needed in seems this like, type of game. It seems like a lot of confidence as well from Febby. He's going uh, directly, well, I say directly, he's already got Urn as well as Face Boots, but he's building Akadim Scepter. No Midas or nothing like that to help him get there. It's just directly into Akadim Scepter after his initial items. Yeah, you. Usually you see it versus like heavy team fight or something, so they can see like the blinker blink initiators. But I guess this time because of the shadow blade and oh, baby, yeah, not certainly really wanted to be there. Not while Yapsaw's in the neighborhood. This time he'll still deliver four void. Febby is being charged. Puppy's on his way. But he's coming a long way up river and Febby. <sighs> the damage is not enough. Fada did not. He like canceled the doom as well. He didn't want to commit it onto that that four support hero. But Febby's pretty farmed. Maybe 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 whatever. That's that's the, like. Negligible. He just wants to save it for the next yep. team fight, for when they go get an objective off of it, they can actually push with Doom up. 
You kind of wish, though, he would uh, spend his money like he's sitting on 1.1k unreliable gold. Mm -hmm. So just get that point booster or almost like the Curry is in the neighborhood anyway, and it does actually buy exactly that. The point booster is on the way. Well, while this push is happening up on top, we've got double TPs coming down the bottom lane. Forev being charged, and there the ward is in the trees, which now get broken apart. Forev! That damage is high! He'll decrepify up quickly, farther in the neighborhood. Oh. Forev trying to drain out the catapult to try and stay alive. Oops. Ah, he was dead anyway, but... <laughs> yeah. Slightly on a misclick there, probably trying to click the Doom. But the DK took the top tier 2 tower, bottom tower. Again, Immortals being denied that push. They're being very... I mean, this is... I mean, it's Immortals, right? It's old MVP. They're gonna be very aggressive. They're gonna go for those dive plays. But when you get punished versus this time of the lineup... Or when you do that, you're gonna get punished versus this time of the lineup with the Dragon Knight. And now Yapsor, he stole the Nether Blast. That's gonna be so useful for his team when they group up around that Dragon Knight. And Fada as well is going for Crimson Guard, so they're trying to make up for those uh, armor instances to deal with the CK at least. Yep. But Pugna still is going to be a damage dealing problem. Forks, he's going for Dagon on the Pugna. I have seen him been doing this in some of his pub games just because of how powerful it is too. Because they're going to have the Veil, they're going to have the Decrep on top. Mm. They may also need like quick and easy burst ways to get rid of the clones on the side lane. Considering they lack the physical damage, yeah, this is going to start causing them a lot of problems when, well, I say when BTs arrive, but for the moment, Ace is still working on his Maelstrom. Yeah. Oh, Yepsor might get caught out here, though. He has the Nether Blast, but he doesn't have anything defensive. Yeah, He's just going to accept his death. <laughs> oh, boy. That Decrepify Amplification is just insane. They're gonna, they're really gonna lack physical. It's all relying on QO once, if he is truly gonna be going for the Dagon on the Pugna, which, I, that's, it, it doesn't matter what you get on a Pugna. Life Train is... It's, it's, sp it's space whatever, creation anyway. though, right? Like, yeah, so I guess. For the mid game, you, you focus on your magical damage. Into the late game, you look for the unstoppable QO. I guess Arc Warden doesn't want to build the BKB till super late in the game, so you can just insta-burst him in a lot of occasions as the Pugna, so it kind of makes sense to me in that, in that manner. The double Shadow Blade boys were looking for a pick-off. Very difficult to get one onto MP now that he's finished up his Blink Dagger, has the Veil. There's so much amplification they're going to be scared of, and Yapsor, he's copying at the moment, moving back behind the tower. Febby able to get the Void off, but not before the Crepify wears out, so there's not as much damage as they would have really liked. Support is TPing in, Fada as well as mid one, passing Cure? past the Shrine, but QO with Find the Phantasm, ace. he needs vision, but they, well, one of them has the Shadow Blade. Fada into the tree lines, and mid one is just trying to bait them in. QO finds Ace, though. That's pretty that's a massive, big pick. just able to get the Arc Warden. That's solo as well, he just found him farming the jungle and instantly brought him down with that Phantasm. So finally Immortals get to claim the tower with the death of one of the cores of Secret. Secret's definitely struggling a bit because of their lack of the like, teamfight lineup. They can't really run into Immortals unless they have a clear vision advantage or an outnumbered advantage just because of the nature of their heroes. Winter Wyvern, Puck, Pugna, just way too hard for Secret to run into at this point in time. It does seem kind of crazy to say that when you have a Spirit Breaker on that team. Like, you're meant to run into the mid one MP looking mid. for an opening. As uh, it's just MP getting aggressive against Fada. The charge is coming for on the way from Puppy. Mid one won't be able to catch up. And with Darkness being triggered, Team Secret wary to move to the dire side of the river. Team Secret are really struggling on the vision department this game. Look at the wards coming out from Immortals. It's actually just blanketed the entire uh, enemy side of the map at this point. And they just saw the smoke too. Yeah, now they see the smoke too. The whole time so far, Immortals has been playing with very good vision versus Secret. They're not really leading too much. It's only a negligible lead. It's pretty much bouncing between zero at this point. Yeah. But when you have, like, Doom in the lineup as well, you expect a little bit more money to come in. But he went for the Crimson Guard build. He always takes the Health Town as well on Fada. He never takes the 80 Devour Gold. I saw that. Uh, he, do, he did, I think, twice at Star Letter, I want to say. Yeah, he did play, or maybe it was just once. I think you do it to be to more it. efficient when you go into like a longer split push game. Yeah, I think it's it's just a preference because he's playing off lane. He, he already knows that they have a Dragonite, they have an Arc Warden, they have those type of like the methods to take it to late game. He just wants to be that frontliner that doesn't care, that makes space for that arc. That makes sense. Well, that that'll work until QR gets big. Yeah, it'll work for a it'll work for a bit. I mean, he's 20, 20, almost twenty two hundred HP on this Doom with eight armor. He's pretty damn durable at the moment. Yeah. And of course, the regeneration he's going to get when he turns on Scorched Earth. Yeah. Puppy oh, no. tries to charge off bottom, but unable to. So it's all space at the moment for a secret. They're really just. They have, that's, I mean, you have playing with an Arc Warden. It's going to take a very long time for this hero to get online. They just have to keep picking these beneficial fights. Trying to play around the daytime as much as possible, but now that it is night, it's going to be Immortals leading the charge and looking for pickoffs. I'm still wondering how long it's going to take for. 
for Ace to get online. Like, Maelstrom, Midas, now he's working in towards the BTs. We're 20 minutes in on the Arc Warden. Like, is there ways he can speed it up, or are you okay with the timing for the Arc Warden? It's going to be like 30 minutes before he can really get involved into stuff. It, that's just the, the nature of the hero. We saw a similar kind of thing from Ame in the last series. I think that's just the way the hero has to be played. I, I like the ver the variety that Ame did, though, with the blink into the hex after the Mjolnir. And speaking of variety, Kyo is doing a very Kyo thing. He's going Shadow Blade on the CK to get him to p be able to pierce those back lines. Well, he's going to have an initiation. He's got the front line. He's got Fada. Walks straight up onto him. Maybe he goes for Silver Edge versus the DK to remove that Dragon's Blood eventually, but I think this one's just to pick off the Arc Warden when he's split pushing, not so much versus the Dragon Knight. The Observer Ward saw Puppy in the tree line behind the Tier 2, behind the Tier 1 tower. So while the four heroes smoke up, there's not a lot of vision for the Radiant side at the moment. They still don't see him, so they're using the CK to scout. And they're both CK, scouting. He doesn't find <laughs> Wyvern. Oh, he doesn't find the, uh, the Dragon Knight, sorry. They're both stalking. Elder Dragon form has worn off though. I don't know if Secret really wants to fight this. They have to stall more. Spirit Break is charging top. We'll see if uh, mid one. Well, he doesn't react to it as all the fight in the mid. They charge the opposite direction, leaving Fada exposed as well as that mid tier one tower. So both Fada and Yapsaw bite the dust. The tier one tower will join them. Uh oh, definitely a concern. They can't really fight at all versus what Immortals got. And Immortals might just make their way into the rush pit now. They are doing exactly that. And now we'll see the damage. They've got Spark Race to throw Vision in there, but there's no way Secret can contest this. Well, Yapsaw is up in five seconds' time. Arc Warden has his clone available too if they want to try it. But they have to move over. Roshan's going down. It's taking a little bit of time. Thanks to Reality Rift, you do oh. have the negative armor they're looking for. Raiding Courage has died. Is that the creeps? Yeah, let me just check the position of it. Yeah, it was yeah, it was it was creeps between the tier two and tier three tower in mid. Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, and they get the Rosh. Okay, so they get a little bit more surge of gold from that courier as well as the Rosh, and that's a big benefit. When you're playing versus these long cooldowns like Doom, and you have an Aegis on one of your main carries, yep. it's definitely a problem for Secret. You also just bought more time. So Roshan goes down. Immortals now have Febby farming up on the bottom lane too, so he's building in very close that Aghanim Scepter, only 500 gold away from it. So you got a team 500 gold away from having having unobstructed vision when they and, have the when and they, they have, have an Aegis and a team fight advantage lineup. Yep. So they can choose to and when and they want when they want to do pickoffs, when they want to do team fights as well because of this Aghanims that'll be out on the Night Stalker as well as the Shadow Blade as we mentioned on QO. Do you like the item item build as well from QO? You go hard. This is the item, yeah. Yep. Absolutely, this is just the build on the CK. Usually we see the armlet in between, not the Secret Shadow Blade. Around. They're looking to have a crack over on Febby. Yapsol's gonna get the pick up, and MP, the jump in, three-man silence and dream coil. Mid one is the BKB to protect him, but then he's instantly cursed up. Vada and Ace attacking into him, now he breaks free, and Febby will end up falling. QO's in the back lines, but all the moment he's doing is attacking a clone. It's not enough for him to really fight with. Put into the boy in the bubble moment. Mid one, he'll find the kill, getting drained down. There's only the Aegis the more to burn, so a one-for-one -one trade off the supports, plus the Aegis. Doombringer caught on the wrong side of the tracks. To Prepper finds that Kuro has to wait to attack him, and that will allow MP to secure the kill with his level 4 rift. Bit of an awkward fight, just the way it was kind of taken. But as soon as we see the BKB wear off on mid one, Secret just can't team fight. Yep. And I think they're going to need like a blink dagger on the Doom in order for him to get those positions for the jump, because he's just walking into the fights, getting completely controlled, and getting silenced over and over again, getting stunned, he just can't find a Doom target. I think he did. Yeah, he did queue up with Blink Dagger next after that Crimson Guard. So he's very durable, but he can't really get his Doom off. MP, that's a fun jump. Silence on mid one as well as Yamso, who's killing off the ward while Puppy was charging forward to QO. More supports coming in, but QO goes to the Phantasm. The Chaos Bolt, two seconds on over on mid one. Now stolen by Yapsaw. Ready to inflict it into the Chaos Line. A four second stun for Yapsaw, plus the reveal of dust. Nowhere to hide. QO will end up falling. He cannot go invis with a Shadow Blade because of that dust. There is a little bit of a revenge, however, a perfect dream call, giving MP a double kill, but Immortals, they don't have the numbers anymore. Three heroes down, it's about to become four, a quick phase shift, and will that jump away? It won't happen. Oh it was goodness. a stolen ward? Is that actually what that was with the Nether Ward? No, it was It was still just being disabled, can't blink away, and Immortal lose too many on top of the Radiant Shrine. This is such an Immortals game. It's, that's all I'm thinking, it's just battles happening everywhere. It's 16 to 18 at 25 minutes. The, the, the way, the places where the fights are being taken to, look where that one's taken. 
Immortals chooses to take this fight near the enemy shrine with no objectives to be gained. So here we see QO does get caught. He can Shadow Blade and kind of just run if he, he wants, wants to, to fight. but he wants to fight. Night Stalker is not there. Febby is not into this, and this is going to be a five-man fight for Secret. So they already have numbers advantage. It just it seems like it's such a strange position for them to really want to just go for that fight rather than just running away and resetting because they don't have all their heroes. So fighting on top of the shrine with no real objective to gain, definitely a bit of a blunder there for Immortals. Yeah, they have to try and curve this or else they're going to end up giving Team Secret a larger opening. And that's exactly what happened. Like, it wasn't a huge advantage. Like, you're sitting around 3,000 gold and experience advantage for Immortals before that fight. And now it starts to more flatline level it out in the graphs. So, still a very close game. Of course, as you said, a perfect Immortals game. Keep the fighting going. Once that heart is up on QO, then you start to question just how much damage Team Secret will have. But at the moment, it appears to be there in droves. Yeah, they, they should be able to, to be honest. Like, they're making a lot of space for Ace on the Arc Ward. And look, he's already, top, he's already getting to top two on net worth. He's got Mjolnir finished up in a second now. I think Secret's doing a great job of stalling versus this Pugna lineup, who's claimed only three towers at the 26 minute mark. That top tower still has 1,200 out of 14 life. Immortals hasn't even gone up there. They've just wanted to battle inside the enemy jungle, battle inside the other side of the enemy jungle, not really looking at the objective game, just fight, fight, fight. And that's I mean, that's Immortals in a nutshell, Yeah, like I, we said. I'm wondering if it's also Immortals thinking like it's more about the high ground than anything else. Yapsaw, Silence is out, mid one, right behind MP. Support's gonna be there in the form of Dubu. They get the strike onto MP as Puppy starts running up into the river. He's really on the wrong side of this. So Febby's able to help bring him down with the help of Ferev, but the curse keeping Doombringer out of the fight. Oh. While it will be Ace trapped in by QO, and here is that damage Immortal wants. With mid one's BKB wearing off, he's out of range of any kind of detection. There's no gem, there's no dust, so he can just keep the run going. And Febby focusing to grab and Diab, so he can't reach him, so he voids Fighter instead. QO, he's on the way in. Reality Rift pulling in the Doom. So much negative armor and the four second Chaos Bolt. Combine it with the Saki of Forev, they'll bring down Fada, and they're looking for another bigger one. They're gonna be the last Dragon Slayer if possible. Mid one's on the run, the last survivor of his race. Team Secret being that. That. All five down. Maybe they can get the Chaos Knight. No, they can't. The Doom isn't enough damage either. I'm waiting for to see four of them mention this fight. Oh, nice Pugna. I love me some Pugna. 2.5, almost 2.6k. The Nether Ward did a lot in that fight as well. But So that curse was interesting. So Dubu gets it off and it actually pulls Ace into it. So he can't use his hero, right? And then QO comes in and Reality rifts him out of it oh. and ends up getting the kill. And oh, Ace ports right into his death. It's looking light onto the shrine. He's got it up though. He's going to be able to man fight for a bit. Oh my god. <laughs> is he going to kill Forev? Ace, he's looking for it. He's in the bubble for Rev oh, to grab a fire god. and MP in through the rear. He'll claim the real and the clone. Oh. Where are the lightning procs where he needed them? Boy, Order 66 failed. Wow. And what a swing coming out. Now it's 5k advantage for Immortals, but this is... They're just fighting. They're not They're not going for objectives, dude. <laughs> this team's crazy. This is, this is what we hope to see. I'm fairly certain every single person, when they saw the lineup of Immortals being announced, was like, hell yes. Bring me some spice in my games, please. I mean, now they've got... Kuo's got a full heart now after all this. And now they're finally looking. They're like, guys, they're still a top tower. Let's go up there. But wait, there's a hero mid. Let's kill him. Okay, wait, top tower. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, it's, it's, that's the way they play. They just like to go for kills and try to get that advantage through it. And then it's working. The AoE stun to create space, but this is that jump. Yep. Ace TPing in where he had absolutely no vision and immortals. As you said, their war game was perfect. Yeah, and that decrepify. Look at how clutch that was. The raindrop it as well, saving him on top of that decrep. Perfectly played there by Forev. And look at that smile. <laughs> Everything's coming up, Immortals. TP's coming in towards the top lane as well. Very quickly cancelled. Now it's actually mid one coming back, and he's all the way on the bottom lane. And Immortals quickly pinged this as well. So they understand the DK has to walk back from the bottom lane. They'll take this as an invitation to push into the tier 3 tower. No Phantasm up for now. Yep, so I'll try and slow it down. The Dream Call from MP is going to miss. Yapsol was looking for a quick spell steal, trick of the Lincoln Sphere of MP, oh, and the drain on the puppy. He came in close, the drain won't be enough. Puppy is in the safe zone, but Doombringer, again, the bubble protection. 
Immortals they... tried to push, they did some decent damage, but they don't claim the objective. They forced reaction. I think that's the biggest thing there. They got they got some deep wards down, they forced reaction. I think they're pretty happy about that, but Secret, I think this is the time for sure for them to buy a gem. Mm -hmm. Try to get that ward vision, because I think they're starting to feel that they're uh, they're just under vision at all times in this. How do you get the ward vision when Febby has the Aghanim Scepter? It like, is tough. It's, it's almost impossible, and coming up to the next fight, which will be Roshan, he'll spawn up in under a minute. This is another reason probably why Immortals backed up. If they try to force that yeah. issue, lost the fight, they'll give Team Secret the opportunity to take out the big man. They know that, uh, Secret knows that Immortal threatened the high ground, so they're assuming there's some base wards, etc., stuff like that. I don't know if they really want to get, like, so many big wards out versus that gem, maybe just some high ground ones. But other than that, I think they need the gem to just catch the CK as well. This Shadow Blade is actually pretending to be quite an issue for them. DD on QO. He's looking for a pickoff. 20 now as well. He hasn't found the opening just yet. Instead, they're picking off the wards, which is making Team Secret a little bit more nervous. Mm -hmm. Because they know gem on gem action. Very difficult for either side to get a proper jump. Even more difficult for Team Secret during nighttime. And we have another 42 seconds worth of that nighttime. And Dark just coming off cooldown in five seconds time. Yeah. So it's you could say it's a night there. Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> that was, that was well, welcome to the worst joke of the day! I'll, I'll probably have a worse one than that. Actually, Paul will probably already have like four worse ones today. <laughs> That's true, we just don't hear him because we don't listen to Paul. Jump forward, QO being initiated on, charge in, a lot of damage on the puppy for that charge. Even with the Doom on the CK, you know he can tank it out and the curse is wasting the BKB at mid one. By They're the just time he reset. gets out the curse, the BKB is already done. Yeah, Immortals are just going to reset. They didn't have to commit anything big. Secret committed both of their big ults, the Dragon Form as well as the Doom. So they're just gonna wait, Doom is over, and now it's their time to get that aggression going. You do have Darkness running out though, that's gonna be the only disadvantage here for Immortals. So they, they won't have the pure vision advantage, because we're, come we're coming out of Darkness into Daytime. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, 24, 28, yeah, yeah, you're right. They're going for the smoke up anyway. They look. They they want to fight anyway because it's under. Uh, it's into the no ultimates that secret has. <laughs> they want to fight anyway because they're immortal. Because they're immortal. <laughs> no, it's El Dragon Form and Doom are the only really real team fight skills that secret have. While Immortal has quite a lot more, and they're not having to use Phantasm of course mm -hmm. for any of this. But they're gonna have it for their Aegis and Cheese Siege push. Yep. Ready for that one. Roshan is already down to uh, one third of his HP. Team Secret, not really in the area to contest this, and with the Creepway pushing in through top with no defense, this has to flag warning bells for Team Secret. Something is awry. I just don't think they just can't touch that. Uh, I don't really see how they can fight into Immortals lineup when they're five. They have to look for pickoffs in the back lines, but versus this Night Stalker Aghanims, and Immortals just been sticking together. That's the that's the one big, the big beautiful thing when you are just non-stop fighting, and the fighting team is, you're always going to be together. So do you, do you just wait for it? If Immortals is that predictable, they're going to fight as a big group, can Team Secret defend high ground? Let the Tier 2 tower drop in mid, and fight them inside. I think that's their only way that they can. They have to, they still have to buy more time for this Arc Warden. He's not online. And even even if he does get online, playing versus a, a CK like this already, who's sitting at 4k HP, soon to have an AC on top, which will push him up to the 25 armor mark. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really tough for them to actually bring him down or just force them out of their base. Well, Immortals have claimed that last out of tower. They want the tier 3. This will open up the shrines as well, so the only out of positions the Team Secret have to work with. Under threat if they can bring it down, the darkness up for Febby, so vision game from Team Secret is even worse. They only barely see outside their base with this vision change. QO into the spark race, but all he's got to do is back up, regenerate up a little bit once the heart kicks in. And they can just keep doing this time and time again. Yeah, four of almost level 20 now too. Oh, he's draining the close. Mid one initiates, he's looking for the kill on, onto, onto Pugna. It won't work when Dubu is there to protect him. With that cold embrace, Fada in as a way too deep. He's underneath his own tier three tower and that's not enough to survive. Puppy will get brought down as well on the back Locks lines. Over. And it looks like Immortals are cracking the top of the team secret base. They'll go in, they'll kill off mid one. QO's got a triple kill. 
buybacks coming thick and fast from Team Secret. It's all or nothing. They have to find a defense here. Fighting against the Nether Ward, hard to do. They don't have any reveal. They've lost the gem as well. DK's not buying back. Without Dragon Form, it is kind of futile to do so anyway. But with Ace, they can at least force them back out. Night Stalker will die. But when Night Stalker is worth almost 600 gold for a kill, you know you're in a bad position. Vada will blink in for the Doom, keeping Pugner off the lines. QO's in deep. Remember, he's got the Aegis Immortal, but where's the detection? He's walking out. Vada comes back in again. He's got the Gem of True Side. So QO, a quick reality rift. Dubu will curse over on Vada. Ace keeping the distance for the moment. They'll get a quick Infernal Blade. QO needs to die here now. Team Secret, they need some exit kills. QO being picked up by Yapsaw. Hold him in close. Hold him in tight to the bosom of Team Secret. QO will end up falling. 80 seconds for him on the sidelines and for all the buybacks and which Team Secret actually committed. They get huge kills on the way out and they hold their mid ranks. Even if they lost their tier 3 tower, this has to be worth it in the position they were in. It's, it's close. It still is quite a lot that they had to expend to go for those kills. Considering it was practically GG if they yeah, didn't get was. what happened. Yeah. It's, you're taking this. They're still in a massive deficit even after all that. I think, did they get the gem? Did they not get the gem from uh, Febby? But uh, no, the, the gem got regathered by Doom. Father got back in there and that was his. Him. That was their gem though. Yeah. yeah. That was theirs? Yeah, yeah that was, it was the one that... It was on mid one. It got dropped, yep. on, dropped on mid one then regathered. But right now they're they're lacking damage so highly. Dubu has oh. been so on point with his cold embraces. Mid one! He's going to be found. He's actually going to go for the wipe. And have they got enough damage with the spark right there? Dubu, he's going to cold embrace himself up. Needs the life. Ace looking for the magical damage through that Mjolnir. And he's going to get it as well. The follow up bash now. The strike into Febby. Multiple heroes down for Immortals. And they don't have buyback. And that's the gem now. Now they take the gem from uh, Febby. Mid one, though, nearly dropping to just that deep crept Dagon. It doesn't do so much damage. But Ace. Still having a decent amount of damage through that Cold Embrace, pretty relevant, but Dubu's really been on point with these Cold Embraces this game. Every time instantly fallen. someone gets focused, he's on there. This will be a harder push now. I don't think Team Seeker can really force it. Kuro's back up with Phantasm, Puck is respawning as well. They still need a lot more in Secret. They need this this uh, Arc Warden to be even bigger. And mid one having to buy back there, his net worth, net worth has been totally halted at 13k. Problematic for him. Yes, still a big concern coming out for Secret. They've got, they're getting online though. It's the yeah. high ground defense is the big thing as Arc Warden. With that magnetic field plus those spark rates, it's very hard to just go for the kills. If I think if Immortals had played a little bit slower, if they just reset after the initial jump from the Dragonite, maybe they can try to slow play with the Pugna. But it is a bit tough with that blink reveal from mid one. It was nicely played by Team Secret. They understood they had yes. to take it to Immortals. You have to and, versus Pugna. And not just passively play it. Yeah, you have to versus Pugna, because once Pugna gets level 22, gets that increased cast range, you can just blast from all the way down the hill. Can Team Secret still find enough space for mid one to farm? Like, he's out a long, long way. I'm thinking the more Ace pushes, does he just do side lanes only? I think mid one just has to get gold through kills at this point. Some neutral farm as well. It's mostly going to be Ace taking the whole map, though. Yeah. <laughs> Because right, right now he's spending, he's taking all of the camps. His clones are pushing in, he's doing the side lane, and the primary reason he's doing it at the moment is looking for a BKB. He for the needs fights. it. He really needs it this game. That's what we were talking about. You don't really want to build it on an Arc Warden, but you have to at one point versus versus Pugna, versus Puck. And Puck is also going to be going for that Dagon 5. So there's going to be double Dagon 5 on the side of Immortals with Veil and a Decrep. We're going to see heroes getting bursted down from pretty much full. Yep. But then again, MP is going to be getting a lot more money soon too. He's only a, a quarter of a level off of 420. Yeah. He is quite close to that. He actually went for the minus three sec waning rift, and he's building into Dagon anyway. So usually we see the spell lamp talent because you anticipate getting those Dagons later on. Maybe but. doesn't feel like he like he needs it when he's also got the Crepify Pugna. Like that's already a huge amplification. Still pretty nice, but I guess he just he was feeling like he wanted the load the matching cooldown of the orb to the silence. Mm -hmm. It's just preference between players. Ideally though, ideally though, since he's building Dagon, the amp would probably be better in the long run. Radiance top shrine. Uh, Immortals have to keep coming back. They're gonna be getting so frustrated about this. Now the top lane is being pressured. Puck is having to return. And it's not like they have a keeper of the light in their team that can recall and keep the pressure up. They when they do this, they're forced to come back. Yeah. At least they have bots, right? At least the puck has that. Yep. And now level, yep, level yep. 25. This, this is one of the sexiest things ever. That's gold, gold counter, counter yeah. when you're on a puck. 
It's, it's, it's like watching a jackpot. Like you go you go into Vegas and you see that big thing. Like let me let me just pull the lever. Let me pull the lever. The money just keeps rising until I pull. I remember when I first saw it added and I was just I died as puck or something. I watched someone <laughs> die as puck and I was like, wow, you actually get like a thousand gold while you're dead. That's lovely. Let, let, let me just buy my buyback. Oh wait, hang yeah. on. The game buys it for me. Alright, so Team Secret. They've almost, almost waited enough time for the buyback stars to come back off cooldown. They've got another two and a half minutes before everyone's got their buybacks up again. Yeah, they're doing, they're doing a good job of keeping the lanes pushed out, just shoving the lanes with Ace, and we see mid one expending even Dragon Form. Did have an Arcane Rune this time, but trying to do anything to increase his farm. Even takes the GPM talent on the Dragon Knight, understanding that if Secret are going to be the ones to take this game, it's going to be later on, because they just have to rely on getting the Doom on the proper targets, as well as Ace just getting massive on that Arc Warden. But we've been seeing Fada really struggle this game to get those dooms off. He can't get into the fights because he just gets silenced, gets disabled, or a curse or something along those lines. Yeah, he's got no real way to break free of that either. Like with with the Shiva's guard as well as the Crimson guard, at least he provides his team a lot of like he's got himself armor as well as like the block and the slow. But he has to get the perfect blink position. But you can't do that against an Agadim Scepter Night Stalker. Yeah, it's, I feel like, it's impossible for him. I feel like he should probably go for like Bobby KP next, but that might just be a little bit too all in. He's queued up the Halberd, which is quite nice versus the CK, but it doesn't stop the Phantasms. They're actually pinging, looking towards the bottom lane. So Nether Ward is down. They decrepify and get a blast onto the tower. Creep Wave will now arrive. Mid one will cop the next blast, and the cop. The, look at the cast range. Look at look at where he's standing. They took no risk at the position where you're able to blast from when you get that level 20 plus Aether Lens. But when the racks, when the tower's down, then you're a little bit more risk because you're pushing up a bit more, but... This is why Team Secret initiated before, but you're yeah. on the bottom lane. It's it's not as, it's a wide initiation area as when they push through the mid. Daytime for two minutes. Immortals yep. backs up. Yeah, they don't have darkness for another 72 seconds. So they can't even force it. And then Ace capitalizes on the opportunity. Send, Send the, the clone yep. towards the top lane. And they actually spoke up themselves, Team Secret. Well, you want to try and defend. There's no one really defending the bottom tower, so I wonder if Immortals will worry about this. MP just broke the smoke mid. He blinked in and did the... He was trying to clear the creep wave, but unfortunately Yapsor was inside that area. So they do see him, and we'll probably see the next fight happen around this Roche. Yeah, he is up. Nighttime in about a minute and 50 seconds. If Secret Feb can capitalize on the daytime. Feb he's so. got an Invis rune, and he's still got the gem. So they jump in. It's actually Team Secret. They're going to go into the pit. Demon now, Dragon Knight. Immortals don't know about this. They don't have vision inside of Roshan. As you said, with that Dragon Knight having the double damage, this is going to happen a lot faster than Immortals would probably think it would. So, Night Stalker. They're pinging it. They know something's up now. Yeah, they're coming in. Puck just TP'd in. Here comes your Orb Scout. Roshan down to 4.6k and Team Secret. They back out of the pit, trigger the Shadow Blade on mid one, and they're looking for an opportunity. Oh, they're, gonna have, they're not going to have Dragon Form now for the fight. It's going to be wearing out soon. Maybe then you don't have the They're fight. trying to just pick it. They're trying to just go for it right now. They're get, looking at QO. QO. Yep. They got the duel on him. That is nice. Remember, he's still got the heart and that shrine's available. If they can reach it, then mortals will have a chance to fight. The curse is there and space is getting created. And the counter curse is onto the partner. But the cold embrace from Dubu will protect him for a little bit. Ace is still there to bring in that, bit, that magical damage. And under the shrine, it's still not enough. Double buybacks on the way from mortal. They want to win this fight while MP was picking up the back. Lines. Rubik is down for the count. Ace also caught in no man's land. So a bit of a quick breakout. It was just the illusion for the moment. The clone, the real one, is being chased down by the puck. Here comes your TP. Where's the disable? Where's the stun? It doesn't exist. But Immortals, with a buyback now, they have to claim Roshan to make this worth it. Yeah, they, they 100% have to. Beautiful that time. Finally, Fada gets the, cur like, the Doom of the Century right there. That range had to be it. Like, Maximum yeah. range. And then, of course, Dubu with a beautiful curse, not only to shut down mid one's BKB doing the filtration, then Yapsor steals it, then Dubu throws a cold embrace on top of that initial curse. But overall, Immortals. Alright, overall, Secret coming out ahead in that one. Immortals having to expend heavy buybacks. At least they're able to claim the Aegis, but just look at the gold. That, that comeback from Secret is massive. And there's the Doom for maximum distance thanks to the charge from Puppy. And it's just a it's a pretty great place for Secret to fight because of their, they're all stacked up, mm -hmm. and that's where Ace just sits in the back lines, and with the Mjolnir and uh, Lightning procs, it's more than enough damage to bring everybody down. But yeah, that curse from Yapsor was absolutely beautiful on top of the Doom. Yeah, it really did enable Ace just to go ham. Yep.
Just sit in the back. That's that's all this hero needs to do. Is you need those tanky frontliners or some kind of disable. They just let you have that distance away from the fight. So immortals, like you're 45 minutes in, you have the Aegis immortal in your hands. It's in the hands of the CK. How do you approach it this time? It hasn't worked the last times you pushed into the team secret base. What do you change to be effective? Maybe not this, like losing Dubu in such a such a position. Oh, actually, maybe they don't. MP jumps in, double dream call. Initiation was there. Yapsaw goes up, tries to protect it, but just amplifies the damage of MP's Dagon. And the stun, Poppy, they keep pushing him down with the four star. A three second stun. But then again, you've got the CK so far on the front lines. There's no buyback available from Yapsaw. Poppy gets drained out by Ace. Agus Immortal is burnt, but there's the curse. Slowing down the fight. Dubu trying to bail out. He cannot do so. Not enough life. Not when Bada was that close to him. Now the three second stun. Another Dagon kill by back available for the Doombringer, so Team Secret can at least get back to a three-man lineup, but that will be all they have for this, unless mid one can find the perfect jump. It's not going to be the perfect jump, in oh fact, it's the my. worst jump! He just gets exploded! Double no dagging. buyback for the DK! What do you do here? The Doombringer and the Ark Warden, they are the ones that have to hold it, but Ace gets pulled in. It's the BKB doing the work, at least for his clone. The real one is back at base, but this looks like a double lane of racks that Immortals can now claim. Having level 25 now in QO, he can use the Reality Rift to pierce through that BKB to force them into disadvantageous positions. But yeah, Immortals with that age, is this, with that is this cheese. Three? Is this three lanes? Mid one still can't come back. I think it just should be, yeah. Oh god, that dang! Double <laughs> dang it! <laughs> Woo! Bye, Absol! No feel this! They got the Doom off on the CK. Dead, That's though. nice. He doesn't actually have the Aegis Immortal anymore. So Kuro will fall as two minutes without the CK. The Gemma True Side also lost. Is this again a mortal for backing out in time? MPs come in. He wanted to try and grab the gem. That won't quite work. Low on life, 140. Puppy coming in close, but he guesses poorly. Running up as opposed to down the lane. I mean, this, this is the most typical Immortals game I've ever seen. Just going for kills. Who cares about the objective? Die for those kills. Paying did, with their lives. Did Team Secret just push now? You got a 90 second window without a CK. They got They have to do something. They, I think they have to go for that mid. They know that there's no buyback. Yep, he's got it on cooldown for four minutes on the CK. Yeah, I think going mid's fine here. They might be able to actually get a Rax, but it's still pretty hard to defend into Immortals with deep push and out spam. Yeah. With that Puck and Pugna. But you got a crazy push that can arrive from the Arc Warden, so he can keep the side lanes at least pressured out for the moment. Dubu's TP is on cooldown for 10 more seconds, and Splinter Blast is pretty nice to be able to push that back. Mid one and Poppy are looking for an opening. The Shadow Blades, they're just holding in close out of vision of Immortals, hoping that someone well, just come an inch too close. They're probably oh, hoping more on MP. Whoa, hey! What? Uh, uh, control, Halt, Delete, Hero. Except he can't restart for 75 seconds. Now Dubu comes out. The curse is only on the clone. Puppy turning around, just staring at the clone. But Dubu, he's in trouble. The Nether Strike will pull him back out again. And now it's all really up to Ace to keep this pressure on. Without the DK, they don't have that fantastic push power, but they have the damage. Febby copping so much so quickly. They need to get a lane of racks. That's what they need to bounce it out. But in 20 seconds' time, the CK is back to the world of the living. And Team Secret, just how far can you force it? Febby is hovering around. You've got the movement speed on Fada. And here comes MP looking to force the fight. Eight seconds till the return of CK. Febby in the middle of it all, but the Dream Call controlling up Team Secret. They've already found one kill. It's on to Fada. He's down for a very long time. Ace still alive and kicking for the moment. But with the return of CK, QO comes in. He TPs on top of the shrine. And now he'll start ripping apart the Mad Cal, who just madly charges back to the safety of base. But MP too quick with the Yule set. Cutting off the retreat. Dagon's down the Mad Cow, and the disease has been removed. Ark Warden, though, still cancerous inside the base, defending. I'm still speechless how fast mid one just got bursted. He just got double Dagon in the beginning of all of that. The Dagon's heavily paying off, though, having both of those. Even though they have BKBs, it's, if they don't get it off, they just get insta bursted from full. Yep. Literal 2200 damage. It's like the second he gets bailed, and the crap is like, okay, well, I'm done. QO. Walking up into the high ground, getting stunned up, comboed, he's got Phantasm though. That's a lot of drain, and now mid one, the damage! All that dragon blood armor and regeneration Ace counting for nothing, up. and a four second stun on Ace! 
that could be the game right there. Ace will buy back Yapsor, trying to buy some time with the Gozer, but once again, all it does is amplify MP's power. Four heroes down, none of them have buyback. Megas will be granted to Immortals, and it looks like game one of this series will come along with it. The curse perfectly onto Ace. They'll finish the job here, Immortals. Team Secret pushing up the daisies. GG. That was crazy. There's 70, there's 73 kills in this game. Immortals are the most bloodthirsty team I've ever seen. Props to them though, giving everyone a of entertainment with the double daggons, but really nice little intricate plays coming out from like Dubu in particular with the cold embraces, QO getting very farmed, but Secret definitely falling quite short, mid one dying back to back multiple times, and Ace, even though he's got godlike at the end, it's really tough to play Arc Warden versus CK. He, they just pierce the back lines and jump on him. Yep. Well, the, the panel was wondering, would the Arc Warden pickup actually be what they were looking for?